go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to day three of our online teaching institute. And as my colleague Everett said at the end of the day yesterday, him and I have big shoes to fill today, not to have anything to do with the size of our colleagues' feet, but just that that this has just been such a tremendous week so far. So thank you for returning um, to our, our third and final day of the Online Teaching Institute. My name is Anita Parker. And my role at the Center for Teaching and Learning is I am the lead educational develop developer for online and hybrid instruction and, and strategy. And I think you can see my slides. Here we go. Um, my presentation today is called Let's Learn dot 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 hybridly active and student-centered strategies for hybrid teaching. And I've purposefully set up a hybrid uh, learning environment for this session. I, You as an attendee uh, today are as in attendance as a remote student in our class. And here are our in-person <laughs> students in our class who are members of our CTL team. So this is a, a safe experience learning experience uh, for me. And I was just saying I've taught hybridly in the in the past, but it was it was pre pandemic and it's been a while. And uh, and so I'm feeling a, a little bit nervous about doing this, as I'm sure many of our instructor colleagues have felt this past year when they're trying to do the air traffic control of hybrid teaching um, in the moment with their with their classes. So that is the intention of this uh, presentation is to be a hybrid experience about hybrid teaching. Here is our agenda for the upcoming time. I'm going to deliver a workshop for the first 60 minutes or so. And in the workshop, I'll tell you about today's learning outcomes I will overview the very low tech setup that I've got going on here and speak a little bit about how it could be higher tech, but I'm not going to focus on the tech in this presentation. Uh, I'm going to provide you with three micro teaching examples. Uh, well, the first one is going to be a one way traditional short uh, didactic lecture where I talk, you listen, and that's how, how um, the content is delivered. Then I'll move from the, on from that and, and try to take you through a, an individual, kind of collaborative, but still individual activity to, to model how something like that, like that might work in your classroom. And then we're even going to try uh, a short group activity, again, to see the potential of, of the hybrid of bringing remote and in-person students together at the same time. So three little examples. The last uh, 30 minutes will be a, a Q&A, uh, some sharing of some anecdotal situations that maybe we can help uh, out with in the moment. We'll just see how that organically uh, unfolds at, uh, at the end. It's 10 o'clock now, so we'll hopefully start that around 11 o'clock. That's our agenda. My learning outcomes for this time, by the end of this session, hopefully, you will be able to define and describe hybrid teaching at the University of Alberta, to visualize the setup of a low-tech hybrid teaching environment. That's what we have here. Uh, to relate to the experience of being a remote student in a hybrid class, because the tendency is to pay all attention to all the students that are in class and to forget that you have some remote students attending. So, so what does it feel like being a remote student in a hybrid class where you can see other students sitting in physical chairs? And to consider and plan three hybrid teaching scenarios for your own course or courses. And those were the ones that I just listed there. So those are the learning uh, outcomes. How about the equipment? The bare minimum for hybrid to work in any situation is this. You need one device. And that could be this laptop that I have here. Uh, that device needs to have a camera a microphone, a monitor, some speakers, and of course, an internet connection. So as an instructor, technically, 
in a smaller class, not so much in a bigger class. This is really all that you need. And this is what the remote students need as well. Um, the in-person students technically don't need anything. They should be able to just have paper and pen, but we will find along the way it's helpful if some of the students have um, a device because when you, when you do uh, groups and you want to integrate remote and in-person students in groups that um, that at least some of the students, at least one person per group in person has a device. But but uh, I won't get too into the, the tech of that as well. But here's what I have today. Today, I have laptop one and laptop two. Laptop one is the one that I'm facing right now. It is unmuted. I was going to use an external mic, a USB mic, a globe mic that you plug in. And the globe mics are nice. They, they're, they're, I think they're about $200 uh, each. They're, they're expensive, but not too expensive. And they really are good at capturing um, other voices in the room if you're having discussions. I didn't plug that in today. And we just tested it. And in our small space, the, the microphone on the laptop I have is actually pretty, pretty good. But that's the one thing I don't have. Uh, my Zoom here is what you're seeing on the screen um, behind me. It's projected onto the screen behind me. And laptop two, I have it over in the corner. That's where you're seeing my side view. I played around with that a few days ago. I thought, well, you want to see my side, not my backside, but you also want to be able to see the, the other students in the room. And that's for social presence. Um, you want to see that, feel like you are part of a physical classroom. That computer is muted. The camera is on, and I've also turned the volume off so that I'm not getting feedback uh, Feedback there. I was going to have a third device. I was going to put my phone somewhere, again, just to, to capture another view for social presence. Or your phone would also be really good for if you were uh, having a discussion and you were able to use your phone to capture some voices at that time. Or maybe you wanted to zoom in to, um, if you're in a lab and the there's some physical manipulation of, of an object or a piece of equipment, et cetera. So a third device like a cell phone or a tablet can be helpful um, for that. But of course, that one would need to be muted. It would have to be called into the Zoom call and the camera would have to be on. I don't have that going on um, today. Um, that's all I'm going to say about the technology. Um, as as an instructor myself, I am moderately savvy with technology. It scares me just a little bit, but I feel like I can figure it out. So so from that position, if if Anita can do it, you can do it. But we have IST on campus. Up on the wall here, there is a poster that says, need help, question mark, contact IST. And I would be more than happy to phone them to, to in the moment. They uh, We've been told they come in 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, um, I'll talk about that later, about having a backup plan in your back pocket. But but know that the, the tech, especially in a larger setting, um, is it can be more um, demanding than what we have going on here. This is one session. You have 15 to 45 sessions with your classes if you meet one or three times uh, a week through the term. So know that that it is, uh, you are on a steep learning curve, but the equipment side of things, the seeing and the hearing, what do you want students to see? What do you want them to hear? It does get better over time. Okay, let me take you through an example of a short lecture. Uh, this is based on, I'll just bring it all up here. This is based on a, a webinet, one of our Wednesday webinets that I gave um, in on the 25th of May. A, the video is on our CTL website, so it'll be more, it'll be a much, the video that, that our mic has edited is much better than, than probably what I'm going to give you today, but I've given you the bit.ly for it. I don't want to put it in the chat because I don't want you to go there now. That's why I've given you the bit.ly. You can write it down. 
and and go and have a look at it later. Um, it, of course, the bit.ly will be in the, the video recording of this presentation that will be on our website later. And I also wrote an article based on my speaking notes from that webinar. Maybe you'd want to read a two-page article instead of watching the 15-minute bit video. So there are the bit.ly's for you. I can share that at the at the end as well if you want me to, to find those URLs for the chat. Okay, what is hybrid teaching? Hybrid teaching, the phrase hybrid teaching has been increasingly used by University of Alberta instructors over the past academic year. It's a teaching situation where what you see on the screen here, many instructors have found themselves in um, and have had limited resources to plan and been kind of figuring it out on the fly. It's a course delivery mode where an instructor teaches in a physical space and some students are in attendance remotely and some students are sitting in desks at a in a classroom table lab seminar um, what clinical setting whatever the the teaching situation might be but they're way by there by way of video conferencing. Um, there are advantages to teaching hybrid as, as you know, as maybe a little anxiety inducing at the beginning that it might feel, it is worth your while, it is worth being on that learning curve, a skill to hone because uh, for I have four reasons that I want to tell you about. And the first one is accessibility. Students don't need to miss class for whatever reason. And this accessibility also has has important implications for uh, programs, departments, faculties, and the university as a whole for reasons of uh, scalability and reach and resilience to future disruptions. Uh, flexibility and motivation. When students have a choice over some aspect of their learning, and in this case, it could be just the choice to attend class in person or remotely, the uh, theory of self-determination tells us that students will be more motivated, more engaged, and less likely to drop out. So that flexibility can be important for some or many of our students. The third one is social presence. The, the beauty of hybrid is that it's synchronous. You are online and synchronous. It's real time. It's a concerted effort to be together, to have back and forth um, discussions, guided problem solving, student presentations, the building of relationships and, and a community. And the fourth one is quality education. And I have two reasons why I think that hybrid teaching has advantages for increasing the quality of the student and the student experience. And the first one is that it requires planning. It's not something that's easily done on the fly. It requires an instructor to think ahead, to plan ahead, maybe seek out professional development to, to, to come to class prepared. And with all that thinking, and planning uh, beforehand that behind the scenes work can lead to a better uh, experience for students. And the second one is active learning. The what, what we're doing right now is not active learning. I'm telling you some stuff and you're listening. But Shortly, we'll get into what would be considered more active learning, but the impetus of coming together is to do something together. Uh, if I was just going to chat like this, I could just record this video and send it to you over eClass, and why would we bother coming together in the first place? So the, the whole students taking a more active role in their learning is one of the benefits, the potential merits of, of a hybrid teaching situation. So although hybrid teaching has been around since the beginning of video conferencing, it really is an innovation that has been fast tracked by, by disruption, the, the teaching circumstances of the past um, few years. So today I have just a few um, food for thought kinds of things when you find yourself in a hybrid teaching situation. The first one is this, plan your class for online rather than in-person delivery. It's easier than the other way around. If you plan for your analog slash paper-based 
physical classroom and then you have some students zooming in, it can be challenging to integrate them. If you plan for online and then you just have the luxury of having some students with you, it's easier to to incorporate the in-person students. So just an overall approach can be helpful. The second one is to where we'll go in a minute, do your best to plan for active learning, make it worthwhile for students to come to class. Otherwise, you might just find yourself alone in class. And maybe that's something we can talk about in the Q&A is is, um, the requirement for attendance. Do can students choose on a class by class, week by week basis? Are you do you ask students to declare um, an attendance mode and stick to it, which can help you with your planning. Uh, Do students have to attend by the way they registered? So we can talk about how how can you make sure you're not alone in the classroom and just end up teaching um, uh, an online class anyways. Um, active learning can be a key to that, to, to have a reason for students to come to class as much as possible. How do you organize groups? How do you have the in-person and the, the remote students, uh, those two groups, um, integrated and, and working um, together? And, and one idea, and you'll see it today, we're going to use a Jamboard um, today, is we're going to have a, a collaborative digital space. We're going to use a Jamboard and a Google Sheets document where I'll have you collaborating. By the way, we seen some really great um, online tools in our in our time over the past two days. We've we've had some Mentimeters and some Padlets and and some jam boards and just you know different ways to use the chat. So so that is one of our outcomes of the OTI is that hopefully you you leave here with with snippets of ideas of things that you can use in your your own class. Um, consistency is key. Make sure whatever you do and be brave. Maybe this isn't something you do on day one of a class, but uh, but over time, you, you're uh, we're in this together with you and your students and you you try out some different things. But having consistency uh, can be key to to making it work over the, the term. Um, the last one is that you are a link. You are the link between the two groups of students, the in-person and the remote students, the the video, the audio, the seeing and the hearing. Uh, They can be an issue when you're facilitating a whole class discussion and you want to to call upon the in-person and the remote students equitably. You want to be a liaison by repeating, 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 repeat the question that was asked, repeat the, um, the, answer that was provided by a student. Um, Repeat this back and forth. uh, And it might seem like a like, wasted time, you're just repeating, but it's not you saying something paraphrasing saying it out loud, gives students time to think, which really can result in greater contribution and greater understanding. And and by a liaison, you might feel like a air traffic controller or a orchestra conductor and uh, and you will succeed um, over time. Okay, last little bit of my one-way lecture. Um, there's no doubt that hybrid teaching has the best chance of success when the instructor has what they need pedagogically and technologically. Uh, so I'm going to give you just like a checklist of pedagogical things, technological things. It's almost like a checklist, a wish list, a to-do list, however you want to take it. Pedagogically, you need time, professional development. That's why you're here today. And resources to be able to plan and deliver your courses. You need uh, this so that you can provide that equitable experience for your students to the complexities of bringing in-person and remote students together at the same time. Uh, What do you need technologically? AV, you need your audio and your uh, video uh, in your classroom. Students need it at home too. And you need to be relatively proficient at it. You don't have to be uh, awesome at it, but you need to, to you know, kind of know what you're doing because not everybody has a, a Graham in their back pocket or a Chris or a Mike in their back uh, par- pocket. Or at least you need that call IST sign on your classroom door. And it's still going to take IST 10 or 15 minutes to get to your classroom. So 
can you have a backup plan for lost connections and other issues? Um, a few slides ago, I had that E-class circle in the middle of the screen. E-class really, even if you have an in-person component to your class, building your course on E-class, having your resources ready to go at everybody's fingertips, having a good E-class site really is key for, for dealing with uh, things like lost connections and any other issues that, uh, that can happen there. And my last tip for you is to be nice to yourself. Uh, teaching hybrid, it's doable, it's valuable, it's fun. It's one of the ingredients, the cobblestones on our post-pandemic higher education path. It takes uh, it takes planning, practice, a little bit of humbleness, and a growth um, mindset. That was that. Okay. Now let's try our first um, attempt at some active learning. This uh, the activity that I'm going to take you through. It's a it's a jam board. I put the bit.ly there. Now the bit.ly could be helpful if uh, if students were in the class and they weren't logged into the Zoom call, but they need to, and so I can't share it with the students in the class on the chat. So that's why I put the bit.ly there because it's, it's a tool to, for both groups of students. And you can see some already joining on, on the bit.ly. And to give the rest of you access, don't do anything on the Jamboard yet, but I'm gonna click on the share button in the upper corner. I'm gonna give anyone with the link editing access. Now that might be a little scary, anyone with the link instead of University of Alberta. I could change that to University of Alberta, but um, there's that means you have to be logged into your Google. I think yesterday someone said, oh, I can't get into the document. You might not have been logged into, um, into your, your, uh, your Google suite. So I'm going to just just so I don't have that, make sure that it's anyone with the link can edit. I'll copy that link, put it into the chat. And now the remote students have that as well. And we should start to see um, people popping, popping on in. Let me um, get, oh, I can't close my chat. There we go. Close that. Close that. So come on into the Jamboard, but don't do um, anything yet till I let you know what what we're up to. Um, there's two pages to this Jamboard. This you're looking at page one of two here, and if you click on the right arrow, you get over to page two of two there. Uh, the first one I've asked you. This this is really just a poll. I could have used lots of other tools for a poll, but. Um, I, I thought this might be fun and, and different. The pictures you see, the emojis that you see, the, you can't move them around. I've made them part of the actual background image on the on the board, so so you won't move them around. But what you can move around are these little gray dots. So you could go grab a little gray dot and drag it to the area on the screen what, of how you are feeling. Isn't that fun? Look at that. They look like ants all moving around. <laughs> now, the in-person students today all have a laptop. That's helpful. If they didn't, I could. I have two devices here. I could easily just step back and say, um, come on up and, and move your gray dot and... and uh, and then they could take turns doing that or do it on each other's screen. If you need more gray dots, just do a click on one and do a control or a command C, command V or a control C, control. Make your own, make your own dots. Put in some sticky notes. It doesn't matter. Second one, after you somebody made their dot bigger. <laughs> Go to the second page. Sticky notes are on the left. This uh, this box on the left, where it's, if you mouse over, it says sticky note. What are your first thoughts about the benefits slash opportunities, challenges slash drawbacks of hybrid teaching? This one won't be anonymous because you'll see, sort of, you'll see that your um your your google 
letter or a little tiny face will be attached to the sticky note as you drag it. It's relatively anonymous, but not completely. Let's take a few minutes to do this. Go back and forth. And then when you've run out of ideas, go and see what your, what your co-attendees are, are doing. Let's we're getting you really used to sticky notes. Uh, if you're interested in an image, if you go on the left and click on add image, you could actually do a Google image search right here. And uh, I don't know, what would I think of hybrid? Um, uh, Brian, yesterday you had uh, cities of chaos. What would be a good chaos image? What was one of the cities you had? Calcutta. Let's see if Google can find a, tra let's go Calcutta traffic. Uh, now, oh, and then I click insert. So, you know, maybe at this point, it's like, this is what I think of hybrid teaching. But we learned from Brian yesterday that uh, um, that's okay. You just, you it is what it is that. You, know, you you embrace the chaos and then you figure it out over time. You just be nice to yourself. There is also uh, text boxes if you don't like the sticky notes, but they they work well. Okay, it's already ten thirty seven. Let's debrief. You've you've now led um, an active learning activity in your class you had it ready beforehand so that you, when your students jumped in they could just go for it and after you do that you debrief so that it has meaning it's connected to the learning outcomes of your course your module your lesson and 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 you you draw from it you don't want to just do an activity and then um and then move on to the next thing you want to debrief and say what's meaning here so what do we see here we see um Look at the, the, this guy up here is smiling and he's got some gray dots. So that's okay. I'm happy to see there's no, nobody's really mad. There's not really anybody really mad. Some people are, I don't have any tears. Yeah. This is the best looking Jamboard ever. I see um, opportunities such as um, um, accessibility, inclusive um, learning, um, that easy. I like this one. It's easier to pivot if you have to go online, um, but also challenges that, that it does get challenging with larger classes. We have trouble in larger classes making every student feel like a like a, a real human in our, our class and not just a number. And now we have two groups and we're trying to bring them together. So and also larger rooms with the, the AV like we just uh, like we just um, said. Thank you all for your contribution um, to this. Yeah. So if you were one thing as a hybrid teacher, you're going to get your exercise because you're just going to be trying to, you know, anyways, it, it, our, our days of sitting in our home offices on our kitchen chairs and teaching on Zoom or, yeah, hybrid teaching will, will keep you moving. That's for sure. OK, so I'm going to stop sharing that. And my next um, um, slide in my key, uh, my keynote on my, my Apple keynote. That was that one. Here's the next one. Um, in-person students. I don't know if you can see that bitly. You're welcome to write that down. I'll put it in the chat in a moment. This one is going to take you into a Google slides document. It, uh, don't do anything in the document yet. I'll, I'll give you my, uh, instructions on what we're going to be doing, but this is the one where I'm going to try and, um, divide into groups and, and it's not a day one of the semester kind of thing that you would try and do. It's, and, and, and even in our time today, our in-person students are going to work together and remote students, I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. I'm not going to dare intermingle you yet. That might be like a class three or class four where you, 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 where you've established, you know, who's bringing a laptop to class and how are you going to put these uh, um, classes together? I've been in classrooms the last year. I've seen it done. It can be done. And it, it's really neat when you can bring your in-person and remote students together, but uh, not today. So I'll stop sharing that. Go back to my Chrome. 
So the I had my and I had my tabs all ready to go. That's another tip that uh, my tabs were at the top all ready to go. I made a list of what I needed to have open so that I could get to it relatively quickly. And it's this one called Scavenger Hunt. That's a very not look good looking design. It just says Scavenger Hunt. Let me go get you the editing link. Put it in the chat. There it is. Come on into the document, but don't type um, yet. And here you all come in. Um, Google Slides was not made for collaborative work like Jamboard. That wasn't the intention of the Google Slides um, um, application as Jamboard was. But but we at CTL really like it uh, because you can see on the left who's in what slide and what they're up to. So if you send students out into breakout rooms and you do have the intention to drop into the breakout rooms and see what your students are up to, but that takes time. You can see the activity going on on the left hand uh, left hand side of the screen. Now you'll see that when we get to any one of the boxes, it's it's not lovely typing in these boxes. You might run out of space, but you know there is the notes area at the bottom that you can you can type in as well. So it's not a as nice as Jamboard for for the actual writing or typing in it. But but um, I think you'll, in, if you haven't done this before, I think you'll enjoy having it as this collaborative digital space there where uh, in-person and, and remote students can be working on the same space at the same time. So what's gonna happen here, don't type anything yet. Um, here is the instructions. When you get to your sheet, all the sheets on the left, the, the different colors, there's blue, pink, green, etc. I think I've run out of colors. We're going to need more sheets. How many of us are in this room today? Um, I'll add the more sheets in the moment as needed. It's just a copy and paste. Or if you need one, just copy and paste it uh, yourself. You know how to use your, <laughs> your Google Sheets, so you can do that. But they're all the same. And the scavenger hunt, whether you get it done today or not, um, uh, the resources are in the reference section that is part of the of the references that Graham created for our, for our OTI. There are five boxes. Well, there's six. When you get to your group, claim a box. I don't know if group one is going to. I, hopefully when you go to your breakout room, you'll say, oh, I'm in group six. Well, then go to the group six sheet and uh, and start working there. If someone else has claimed it, just make yourself another sheet for your group and, and claim your sheet by typing your names at the top. So when you get into your group, the first thing you do is type your names. That's your sheet. That's where you're working. Um, you're going to go to four different sources. I also have them in the bottom in the notes um, section. The first one is a PDF that I take you to. It's uh, it's actually a pretty wonderful book, actually, but it's in PDF form. And I'm taking you just to one particular section to find the answer to this question. What metaphor do the authors provide for the role of the instructor Anonymous Moose is in the way there. Oh, uh, during the interaction inside the classroom aspect of hybrid teaching. If you look in the table of contents, there's a section called interaction inside the classroom. I don't know. I think it's like page 60 or something. Then you scroll down and see what metaphor I'm referring to there. Um, I This is just, I picked it randomly so that it's more of, hey, here's this cool resource that you might want to look at after the session today. The second one, um, the source is a journal article, a scholarly journal article. And my question for you is, what is the effect of attendance mode in versus, for, versus remote on student grades? So being a, an article, you may need to jump down to the remote, to the um, results, the conclusions to find the answer to that question. This one over on the right, practical tips for the classroom. It's just a blog question. What are some web-based tools that can be useful for hybrid teaching? And the last one is a, it's an Australian website for a project that was, I think it was 2017. It's definitely time for a, a similar but up-to-date project. Um, have, there's case studies 
on this website. So go to case study four and, and find the answer to the question, how does the instructor organize groups when students are solving problems on the own, on their own? And then I just have a reflection question for you too. Like, what do, what do you think about this? So that's your task. Get into your group, um, say hello to your group members, claim a sheet, Copy and paste to make yourself a, an own sheet. I'll st once you're there, I'll make a few extras anyways. And uh, and then I will keep you there for about 10 minutes, which likely isn't long enough to get to all of these sources. But bottom line, that's not our focus for today. The focus for today is to, to, to get, it, get it started and see the potential for this kind of activity. Thank you, Graham, for your help with the breakout rooms. I know that wasn't uh, long enough, but I could see your heads in the sheet that you were in and the, the things that you were typing in. So the task today wasn't so much about the task, the, the actual details of the task. Uh, the resources that I sent you to, if you had a chance to get to them, great. If not, no problem. They are all in the, I have them in the reference list at the end of my, my presentation, but they're all in the TALIS reading list that has been created for, for the OTI in general. So that was just the, the side thing. The, the main thing was, was this experience of using a shared collaborative uh, Google Slides document in your classroom to see the potential of, of um, a tool like this that you, and you would share it on eClass. You'd, you'd prepare it ahead of time. It probably took me 15 minutes to prepare that ahead of time. You'd share the link with, with students. Now, maybe you hide the link until you want them to go in because you don't want them to start editing before, uh, before the time that you want them to. Um, I also have talked with instructors that have given students the editing link, but then they've changed the link once it's done to the view only link because then students have used the content that they generated together to help them with an assignment or an, uh, some kind of assessment. So then they, they, the instructor still wanted the students have access to the resource, but to not edit it anymore. And then eClass was used as a, a tool to, to, change, to, um, to change the access um, and give students access to, to that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my keynote. That was that. And, and then here we are at my reference list, which again is, is all available um, uh, in our reading list. But I, I um, want you to know that I, I did my best to base this in, in literature and experiences that instructors have blogged about and written about in the last couple of years, but but also my my own um, experiences um, there. So straightforward, passive, one-way delivery of content through a lecture, uh, kind of a low stakes individual activity, really just a poll that you could have used another tool, tool for as well. And then this more group work where you have to have a discussion with your peers and you have to do something and report on that something by contributing to um, a, a, a document text. And, and, and then would students... Um, would they debrief? Um, debrief at the would they present something at the end of that activity, um, um, etc. Our group here in the class was working on the activity as well. Every one of them has their own laptop, but wasn't there? None of the class today has been logged into the Zoom call. If I was to integrate the two groups again, not a first class kind of thing. Um, one person per group would need to have the laptop logged into the Zoom call, uh, maybe a couple other physical in-person students gathered around, and then there could be two, three, four remote students in attend in that breakout room with that group of students as well. So a little more pre-planning and thinking about how you would make that happen, but it's doable and consistency um, is key.